In this lesson, we're gonna make the trails that follow behind these spheres that we just made on the motion path. If we take a look at the reference we're going from, we can see that the trails kind of follow along with the spheres. So these purple trails are what we're gonna make now. So we can do that using MASH, but we have to do it in kind of a roundabout way. So we already have the spheres, but they're attached to the motion path. So we can't actually you know, make a MASH network of those because they're already doing their own thing. So we need to make a MASH network of a separate piece, and then we'll use these spheres as an input mesh. So let's go to poly modeling, and you can create a cube or a sphere, it doesn't really matter. This is just gonna be a placeholder so the trails know what to follow. So let's make a MASH network out of that. Go to Create MASH Network. And now we can go to the Distribute tab and go down to uh, the Mesh. And we want to input the input mesh as one of these spheres. We can start with the C. And of course, if you click this, um, the option goes away. So you need to make sure you keep Distribute selected and middle mouse drag uh, from the outliner into the input mesh and let go. So you can see it's a ton right there on the top, and we wanna change the method from scatter to voxel. So now we have a voxel, and let's just scale down the cube that we used. I'm gonna rename this as trail driver geo. It just means it's driving the trail. <laughs> you can name it whatever you want. So with that selected, I wanna scale it down so that it's smaller than the sphere. Because if you think about the voxel, if we're trying to voxelize this, this square, this cube needs to fit inside the sphere. So we need to scale it down so when we voxelize it, it will fit inside of it because that's where the trail will be following from. So with the distribute node selected, we can open up the distribute node here and go down to voxel size, it's under voxel settings, and just reduce this down. You can watch the cube get closer and closer to the sphere. And so now, if we hit four, it'll be easier to see. And we can just isolate, select those, and click Distribute to go back to this. And we can kind of see it go right before we get another voxel made. We can do that. We can also just say maximum count is one right here. So it doesn't really matter how much we pull it. We basically just want this thing to sit in the middle, the center of the sphere. So now we have that, we can go back to our mash waiter for that node and add trails. It's under the add utility, so add trails node. And don't worry too much about this warning. It says evaluation skipped, frame change too large. That's because we're on frame 168. And this is also a simulated thing like the spring node is. So when you're on a frame and you're scrubbing, it's gonna kind of freak out. So just don't worry about that while we're working with it. We will, uh, deal with that once we kind of play it back in real time. So we made the trails, but you don't see them in the in the MASH editor window here. It's a little tricky. What did happen is add this little icon here. If we click that, we can see now we can get to that node. I think that's just where they store the utility nodes. It's a little confusing. I don't know why they just don't put it in here with everything else, but they separate it out here in this icon. You can tell the first system we had doesn't have that icon. So you can click that to get to the trails. Let's just rewind this back to where our motion path starts. I'm just gonna isolate select. You can see that we made a mesh now for the trails. So we can select that. And I mean, we really that's really all we need just to see, I guess we can see when the sphere is starting to move. So let's isolate select those. And that pops on. You can see there's this weird kind of, uh, it's already starting the trail outside. So we need to fix that. Other than that, the trail is actually working. If we play it back, we can see we get this thin line, which if we look at another perspective, we can see it is like a plane of a geo, but it's not a circular or three-dimensional object. So we can adjust that as well. But basically the trail is working. So let's get to somewhere where we can see uh, some effect that we'll have now while we're editing the trail. So I'm just gonna hit escape. So we have some trail that we can see. I'm gonna select it again through the mash editor and I need to create a profile curve. That's why this thing isn't three dimensions yet. It doesn't have a profile curve. So I'm gonna make a curve just by using the circle here. And I'm gonna say trail profile curve and go back to the trail node and just middle mouse drag that into the profile curve. That's saying, what is the profile of this trail gonna look like? So now we have some dimension and we can scale it down. Again, we want the head of this thing to be able to fit 
either you can kind of make it look like it's the whole sphere but i think it makes that it makes the sphere look not as spherical if it's even with the edge like that so i wanted to go a little smaller than that but still big enough so that we can see it the trail is super long too so we can actually reduce the trail length here so that while it's playing back it won't be as crazy long and we can also animate this to resolve the issue we saw earlier where the trail was already starting before we were ready for it. Now, the other thing you notice is it's flat and then it gets big. It's all twisted and messed up. So what we need to work with now, if we scroll down on the trails node, is the up vector. And so I can just turn that off to 000 and see if that works. Whenever I run into this, it's gonna be different for every trail. So depending on the direction it's traveling and whatnot, it, it might be a different dimension. But now that I have it at a spot where it's kinked, I can kind of play with this. So what I'm gonna do is command or control middle mouse drag. This is X, Y, and Z. And what we're saying is what vector should this consider up as? And so that'll affect the twist. So if we just kind of yank this out a little bit in the Z, for this logo and this orientation that everything's in, that should work to fix some of those kinks. And we can also do a little rendering trick to fix that as well. And we can maybe add some more curve samples to this. And the other thing we can do super quick, just so we don't have to wait too long to or, or, or wait for other things to see a change while we're on the subject, we can select the geometry, go to the Arnold tab, scroll down and get to subdivision. So what we can say is when this renders, increase the subdivisions because trails doesn't give us a great amount of control to control the subdivisions in the kind of this direction, the back and forth. The curves we are changing were around it, but we wanna add more subdivisions here. So when it gets those kinks, it's a little more smooth. So we can go to subdivisions here in the Arnold tab and go type Cat Clark. It's just the type of math that's going to use and then just say iterations two or three should be enough and so that'll add two or three subdivisions at render time so we can't see any changes now but once we render we'll see it uh, make the, the trail look a little bit smoother so we've got that sorted out we got the trail working all we have to do now is to animate the trail length so we don't have this kind of thing happen once the sphere goes away or before it appears. So let's figure out where the sphere starts. It's over here. So I want to go, let's just say we don't really want it to, the trail to start until, you know, 117 or so. So let's go back into the trails node, scroll back up to the trail length, hit a keyframe, and then we can kind of go forward in time a little bit and hit another keyframe. I'm going to select this node and we can't see the keyframes in the time editor, but we can see them here in the graph editor. So we can see it's the trail length. Those are the keyframes we just made, but we want the first one to be zero. We don't want any trail length, right? Because we don't want it to mess up at the beginning. So now when we play back, we shouldn't have that little piece that was having coming out before we were ready for it. So I do just want to take another look at this up vector thing. Cause that, um, is a little wonky still. So let's go back. Let's see if we can't adjust this anymore. I want to go down to remember up vector and we just kind of pull this out. Let's try to pull it up in Y. Now it's just twisting it. Let's undo that. Now it's just twisting that bottom. I think that might be as good as we can get it. Automatic up vector, yeah. So this is the one wonky thing about it. And this wouldn't be as big of a deal if we had more uh, knots in our curve. So I'm gonna isolate the curve because it's going around this really sharp bend. I'm pretty sure that's why we're having issues. So what we could do is we could add some more dimension here. So what I'm gonna do is go to curves, go down to insert knot, and I'm gonna say between selection because I have these two knots selected. So what we need to keep in mind here is the difference between CVs and knots. So what we need to do is make the knots visible. Right now we're dealing with CVs, uh, control vertexes, 
but knots are different. And that's what we're trying to insert here. They're kind of connected, but I won't go into too much detail right now. But now you can see, if we turn. this is how to turn on knots and how to turn off uh, the CVs. So now we see this little tiny X here. It doesn't matter how much I zoom in, you won't be able to see it. I'll change the background, Alt-B, maybe you can kind of see that purple X more. So this is the difference, that's the only thing. Instead of selecting the CVs, we need to select the knots themselves. So with those selected, let's see if I can't, there we go, that one, and this one, and hit apply. Now we get one in the middle, let's switch back, and we can pull this up, and let's just do the same thing here. Hit apply, oh, yeah, it's, uh, we still have that on, so let's get back to the, the knots, and hit apply. And now, let's see if this doesn't help. Pull this close. And let's unisolate this. Oh, too bad we don't have, I was gonna say, if we had the, the mesh still there, we could see it change in real time. I'm gonna click this part of the manipulator because I know I don't wanna adjust it forward or back. I just wanna round that out just a little bit and see if that's not gonna help the trail. I'm gonna isolate select those two things together and hit play. So it does appear to have helped a little bit, which is kind of cool that, you know, some of these lessons go a little long, but I want to give you as much information because yeah, it's gonna mess up because it's a simulation. It's not, it can't figure it out on the fly, but essentially that's that's the issue here is that was too hard of a turn. So it's gonna kind of freak out a little bit. Um, but if you add a knot like that, it should smooth it out a little bit. See how it's it's much more smooth than those were right on top of each other before. So, and then once we render it and that Cat Clark thing we did earlier in the Arnold Render tab for subdivisions, it'll add subdivisions here. So it'll kind of smooth this out a little bit, which will be nice. So we could also hit three on this just to do the mesh preview. So we can kind of see what it'll be like in the render. We could also render it like this, but yeah, you can also continue to add more knots if you want to that, but I'm gonna leave that uh, for you to do because I've already shown you how to do it. And so let's go back into object mode up here and unisolate all this. And so now you know how to make a trail onto a curve. We've done it for this C side. And the last thing we need to do for it is to just animate the trail length again towards the end. So let's just turn off the trail length here. So let's go back up where we have the keys, set a key. And we can also pull this out. When I hit select, it should pop up. It does. Let's just go forward a few frames and we can just pull this all the way down to zero. And you can notice it doesn't actually, even though that we have auto key on right here, which is in the bottom right, some of these attributes will not be picked up by that auto key option. So you still need to set a key here, even though we changed it, it's not gonna remember that. So make sure you're right clicking and setting a key as well. Okay, great. Now we have learned how to make the trails using mesh, voxelizing a cube inside of the sphere we have animated, then adjusting all the trail attributes of the profile curve, of animating the trail length, and changing the CVs on a curve so that we have it you know, follow exactly how we wanna do with the up vectors. We've covered all you need to know to make your own trails. And I'm gonna leave this one, do, go ahead and do the same thing for this side. So if, you know, this is a lot to take in for one lesson, so I just highly recommend replaying this back and doing the exact same steps, but for this sphere as an input mesh instead. That's the only difference. I know some students, uh, I get every once in a while a complaint from a student saying I skipped a section and I wholeheartedly stand by the fact that I already taught you this and that now it's your job to do this other side because I think most students would think it's a waste of time to repeat information. And so I stand by that teaching practice that now you have all the information you need to make your own trail. And so you should do it for this D side as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.